Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's uh, James Martell here. Welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk. Great to have everybody on the line. Arlene, uh, I believe I have you on the line with me as well? Yes, I'm here, James. Wonderful. So it's a little bit of a different evening this evening. We're going to be uh, talking about a concept that I think most people have probably really maybe heard me mention and talk about on the buzz or maybe in some of the training materials, but really haven't had the chance to really flesh out this whole idea of taking a vacation to actually build your business faster. And it's a bit of an odd concept where, you know, if you want to work harder and you want to work faster, take a break. And it's a, something that uh, we started doing, meaning Arlene and I, when we first got into the business, uh, pretty much out of necessity because with four kids and the pace uh, of our life with, with the kids and what we were up to at the time, we had to get away from time to time. Otherwise, we're just going to pull our hair out because – it was a bit of a busy time in our lives. So this whole idea of developing an online business, whether we're, we're doing so to replace an income, earn a little bit of part-time income, or if we're just looking for the freedom that we, you know, we're always desiring. I know when we got started, one of my main goals that I wanted to do, I figured if I could just make $100 a day that – you know, I would be well on my way to Internet success. To me, 3000 bucks a month at that point would replace my income. And it was a bit of a stretch for me thinking about it because I wasn't quite sure if I could do it, but I knew I could give it a good try, and I was going to look for a way to do so. This was before I'd found affiliate programs. Hadn't even heard of the concept yet, and I looked at a lot of the so-called Internet opportunities that were online back in early 1999, if you can think. So there were, really wasn't a lot. But there was some, so I was actively involved in looking for them because my goal was to earn some more income because we just were not earning enough money to actually really have any type of lifestyle whatsoever. So when a buddy of mine wandered into my office and showed me this whole world of affiliate programs and we decided to jump into it and, and make a good go of it, uh, we were, we worked really quite hard on it, although we were running another business at the time, and we didn't have a full-time, you know, we, we weren't at it full-time by any means because we were so involved in our current business. I knew I could see that this, there was a possibility here that I could actually build myself a steady monthly income stream where I wasn't going to have to go to work every day just to make some money. So that's kind of where I was at when we got started, Arlene and I, and since that time, you know, we've had the opportunity to, to build a, an amazing business, the freedom that we have, the ability to travel, and this whole idea of truly being able to set our own schedules where, if, you know, we want to take off. In fact, a good example is right now. Right now, Arlene and I are sitting up about five hours out of Vancouver in a little town called Barrier, British Columbia, and it's in the uh, interior of B.C. in the middle of nowhere up by my parents' place, and uh, we're actually helping them move her, helping my mother move down to the coast. So we're uh, up here to do that. Middle of the week, it's a Wednesday evening for those maybe who are listening in the recording later. But uh, the ability to just say, okay, we're going to take off, we're going to grab the kids, and up up to uh, barrier we go. So when back in the old days when we were running a regular business or we had jobs way back, that really wasn't too practical. But because of affiliate marketing and this ability to create information-rich websites that are going to produce revenue for us, whether we're working on them every day or not, uh, is what really, really appealed to me when we got started. So I would assume that a lot of people that are listening also have that desire to, you know, probably go at this full-time eventually, probably starting off part-time, a little bit apprehensive like we were when we got started. You know, we weren't quite sure if this was the real deal or if this was – going to be a long-term thing or this whole internet thing back in 99 was very new and a lot of uh, skeptics about so if you're if you're feeling that way you're probably in the right place to uh, to have a have a good listen to what some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight 
this whole concept of breakations, the ability to work hard and then play hard, that's what we want to talk about tonight because I think there's some real practical advice here. And it's if you employ it, you're going to be able to push your businesses ahead further. We're not going to get into the technical aspects of the business tonight. We're not going to talk about so much how to do things as far as building sites, but I think we're going to talk about something much more important, which is the why we're building these sites and why we're actually sitting behind our computer, sometimes for hours at a time, sometimes where we're wondering and worrying if we're doing it right or if this really can provide a, you know, a little supplemental retirement income or if this can you know pay for a vacation down to Disney World from time to time or down to Disneyland or whatever your dreams and goals are. Uh, I think that if you uh, employ some of the strategies that we're going to talk about tonight, that you're going to not only be able to build yourself a successful affiliate marketing business, but you're also going to enjoy the lifestyle that goes with it. Because as nice as the money is, it's really not about the money. It's about what the money can do for us, and that is the freedom that it builds and the ability for us to uh, you know, relax a little bit and not have to uh, sweat it all the time. So before we jump into this, though, I'd like to... Uh, Bring Arlene on the line if I could. Arlene? Yeah, I'm here. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the call. It's kind of an odd thing for the husband to be welcoming his wife into uh, into the call, and I know I had to coax you a little bit to get you on the line. So uh, thank you so much for uh, actually letting me twist your arm today. Yeah, it was my pleasure. No, that's good. So, uh, you know, I think I know a lot of listeners, they, they know who you are, of course, because you, you've helped them with support desk and we talk about you for years now on the buzz, but why don't you uh, take a minute or two and maybe think back to when we first got started, you know, when I was working down in the basement by myself, you're probably wondering what I was doing on the computer for hours and hours, and kind of, you know, give give listeners a little bit of an insight to how you saw, saw this business begin early on when we were in, in the Abbots, when we lived in Abbotsford. Well, I do remember you sitting in your office for hours and hours on end, and but I didn't really know what you were doing. Um, I knew that it was something kind of new, and uh, but I know that you you kind of really enjoyed it, and I liked I liked the uh, the checks that were starting to come in, but yeah. I wasn't really involved in the in the beginning at all. I really wasn't even that interested in becoming involved at the beginning. If we think back to 1999 when we actually got started in the business, we were living in a house out in the Abbotsford area, which is about an hour out of Vancouver, up in the Fraser Valley for those that don't know the area. And uh, we lived in a little two-story house. My office was downstairs. Arlene had a little office uh, downstairs in another room as well. But most of her time was actually being spent on one of our kids, our oldest son, Adam, who was having some serious health issues at the time. So as absorbed as I was in this new business and running the other business, Arlene was uh, absorbed with our son trying to get his health issues under control and uh, settled so he could have a life as well. So things started to move along quite nicely, though, Arlene. So when, w- once we actually got this business off the ground and then we moved out to the Abbotsford area, or sorry, we moved from Abbotsford, and then as the checks, as you said, they were they were nice and they started to flow. We moved into the South Surrey area or White Rock, which is right on the coast. And that's, I think, when you first finally got interested in the business. And this would have probably been 18 months, maybe two years after we got started. And I know it's interesting to a lot of people because we get a lot of emails at Support Desk or we meet up with students at conferences and they always say, you know, I really would like to get my spouse involved. You know, if my husband would just get me up, get behind me on this, or if I could get my wife involved, why don't you uh, why don't you tell the story of how you actually got started? Uh, you, you know, finally got interested in the business. Okay, well, it was it was kind of a funny story because um, we just moved into this new house in South Surrey, and um, instead of having one living room, we now had two, and I found these beautiful. They're kind of like a dusty rose leather couches, like a leather couch and love seat. And I really wanted them. I really wanted them. And so I went to James one day and said, James, I need $1,200 to buy this couch set that I found. And he's like, he's thinking to himself, well, you know, we're just getting started and things are, are starting to go good. But he had a different plan, didn't you, James? 
Well, my idea, I mean, $1,200, anytime I can see some extra money aside back then, it was like, okay, $1,200, exactly how many how many new articles could that buy me? Or how could I apply that money to the business to, uh, you know, increase the monthly income? And, and you're right, you know, buying a new leather couch and love seat wasn't on my list. Right, so then James said to me, well, you know, I kind of was wanting to spend that $1,200 on articles, so he said, I'll make you a deal. You write me the articles that I need, and I'll give you the $1,200 that you need for the couches. So that's what we did, and I, I can't remember how many articles it was, but it was around 500 or something. I remember writing articles on satellite TV, Cell phones and all. I don't think it was that many. It wasn't 500 (laughs) articles. Long distance. It was crazy. I remember thinking to myself, okay, well, you know what? I was actually a good writer. I've always enjoyed writing, and so it wasn't a huge stretch for me to write. But it was something that I that I learned quite quickly, and I picked up quite quickly, and I did it. I got all those articles done for you, and I got my leather couches, and I was pumped. That's right. And from then on, I thought, you know what? If I can just help James in this business. Boy, we could we could just you know launch this thing a little bit faster than we are. Put our goals down a little faster. That's right. And by that time, we'd actually we'd all we were already earning a very substantial you know monthly income. But one of the things that Arlene and I have found over the years that is, if you can get a good husband and wife team together, focused, working together, you can unfortunately to the single people you can usually outproduce them by about five times so for those that have spouses that are not maybe quite on side i would suggest that you uh, continue to encourage them to get involved because it makes the business a lot more fun and uh, especially when it comes to this concept of breakations and I'll, let me kind of give everybody a little bit of a flavor for it, but you're the pro at getting this organized Arlene, because you're the one that's always arranging the trips, arranging the airfare, or if we're, you know, heading off in the minivan or whatever we're doing, you're always the one setting it up. But uh, for those that may not understand the concept of breakations, the idea here is it's one thing to work hard, but if you're not rewarding yourself and playing hard, well, then, you know, it kind of gets to be a little bit boring after a while. So we always have a little trip planned where we're going to be heading off somewhere once we get, you know, a certain level of work done. And we've, we we kind of coined the phrase breakation. It's a cross between a break, you know, which might be the afternoon off, and a vacation. So it's not, we're not talking a two-week thing. A breakation is spelled, and we even have a correct spelling for it. It's the word break, dash, and then A-T-I-O-N-S, breakation. So once you work hard and then you you take this little break and we've you know we've done I don't know dozens and dozens of breakations over the years and we find that it really really is a good strategy to move your business forward for probably a number of reasons but one of them is something that we call the get out of town blitz and I don't know if any of you can relate to this but if you're ever about to head off on a vacation and you know you're leaving next Friday, something superhuman kicks into gear because you know you've got all these things you've got to get finished before you head out the door, and you have to get them done, but they're fun to do. It's easy to do. It seems to just happen off, you know, there's no, you know, it's a, it's a lot less, seems a lot less painful because you know you're going to be rewarded on Friday because you're heading to the airport air, air, uh, to fly off to some exotic place or heading out the door somewhere. So, Arlene, why don't you, you give a little bit of a tip on maybe on this whole idea of, you know, the collapsing of the time frames and the breakation idea. You know, um, when we have to head out of town, we always, well, we have this big grease board that we keep handy, and we just start writing stuff down that we need to get done before we go, and we get them done. We, we really do collapse time frames and get, we probably get two weeks worth of work done in one week because we know we're going away. At least. And we just get organized so that when we are away, we are able to uh, to still check our emails and and keep up with whatever we need to, you know, a few hours a day. But it's um, it's great to have that grease board there where you just can just write it all down and just check it all off as you get it done. And it feels so good to put that check mark beside it once the task is done. You know, it kind of reminds me of back in our construction days. You probably remember this, Arlene. When I was in the construction business, we would have a deadline where we would be working on 
a leasehold improvement or a, you know some type of a, a construction project that was a deadline and these deadlines are not usually easily missed and if they are there's usually fines and penalties that go to the contractor so anything it takes to get that thing done usually is what it takes to get it done and I remember one instance in specific I was working on three stores in a, one of the major malls here in Burnaby where the deadline for opening, the grand opening, was at 12 noon on a Saturday. And if you were to walk into that mall at Wednesday night at midnight or Thursday night at midnight, you would have bet the farm that there is no way that that mall would be ready to be opened on Saturday morning at uh, noon. And But, and like I've seen happen so many times in the construction business, Saturday morning, 12 noon, lunchtime comes around, and the mall is spotless, everything's in its place, everything is finished, and the grand opening occurs. There may be the odd little store that's got a little piece of plywood over or something, but generally speaking, for all intents and purposes, that place is done. And that's the power of a deadline, but that's also the power of taking a breakation, because if you handle your holidays in such a way, and I know I work with Phil, and I've worked with a number of people that follow exactly the same plan. Because we're busy running the business, the second we know we have a trip to head out of town, there's always a checklist that has to get put in place. Okay, before I go, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. And Arlene and I, we've used this strategy for years and years now to build our affiliate business because any time we're heading out of town, which is usually about every six to eight weeks on a vacation, we always have the checklist, and it's amazing. All the stuff that we were not getting done, articles being written or we're behind on this little project, we're working on that and it's not quite done, we know before we go out of town it has to be finished and it goes on the, on the whiteboard, and then it's done. Why don't you, uh, Arlene, any of the breakations that we've done recently, why don't you talk about maybe some of the ones that we did last year, just to give people an idea that if they're working on their affiliate business and they want to set up, okay, and I'm going to work hard for six weeks and then I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a breakation. I'm going to take my very first breakation and uh, give, maybe talk about some of the ones we did last year. Okay. Um, well, we we book little breakations and we book big breakations. So I'm going to talk about some of the little ones first. We love to get away, even if it's just for a weekend or two nights. You can feel like you've been gone for a week after just a few nights away from home. Just getting into a different environment, different atmosphere, makes all the difference in the world. It clears your head, it refreshes your mind and your body, and you're able to get back back at it uh, full force when you do get back home. But one of the ones that comes to mind is when we went down to Seattle. We live about three hours south, uh, north of Seattle, so it's easy for us to zip on the I-5, and we're there in you know two and a half to three hours and we'll go down to a Mariners game. So what we did this last time is um, we took Adam, our son Adam, and our daughter Victoria, and we took uh, James's mom. And then James and I, we got in the minivan, went down to Seattle, and took in a Mariners game, which we love to do. And that would be that, for those, those people that are out of town and maybe on other continents, that is a major league ball team, Seattle Mariners. Yep. And, but this time, instead of renting a hotel, I started looking around, and I rented a houseboat, which was very cool. This houseboat was right on Union Bay, and so we had a view of the entire city, of the Space Needle and everything, right from the water. And the kids got up in the morning, and they went kayaking before we went out. And this houseboat was just so cool. We, I just remember laying in the bed, and it's just kind of rocking you to sleep, and just what a different experience that was. And yeah, we that spent was a, a blast. That, that was an absolute blast. Yeah, it was fun. And then we, you know, we went to all the usual places, Pike Place Market, and then down to the waterfront. Um, just did all the things that we love to do in Seattle. And then we got on a little ferry and went over to an island. There's a bunch of little islands um, just off the, the mainland there. And uh, when you look back, you can see the beautiful city from, from the other side. And, you know, we knew we were in no rush to get home. So we just, we just cruised around. We, just, we had a map. We knew where we were going. We knew how to get back. But we just took our time, and we stopped at all of these little towns and we just had a great time. It was so much fun. We ended up in Port Townsend before we got home, and I know um, one of our students lives there. And uh, we, had, we just loved Port Townsend. It was just a cool little place. Hopped on another cool. ferry, and Remember, then we were, we were back Townsend. home again. 
Remember in Port Townsend, though, remember that little hotel? Yeah, they have an old uh, Victorian hotel that's probably about 100 years old, and they've they've done it up and recreated it, so you'd think that you were walking into a hotel in the 1900s, and it's just gorgeous. So we said, when we go back to Port Townsend, that's where we're going to stay. Yeah, so there's the idea for another vacation. So, and and that's a good, that's a that's a good outline of what we did. We took in the Mariners game. We did all the tourist things in Seattle. Got on the little ferry, wandered away through all these little islands in the minivan. Hopped on another ferry to get back over to the mainland, and then we were home. And I think we were gone for three days, two nights, three days. Yeah, that was. And it. you just swore we were gone for a week at least. Right. And we're ready to get back at her. Yeah. Then any any other ones come to mind? Yeah, and then uh, and then also last summer we got on a ferry and went to Seashelt, which is um, it's only about uh, an hour and a half to get there from home. But you, you you again you take another small ferry, which is a short ferry ride, but it feels like you're a long ways from home, and it's just the coolest little place. And I know um, we've got John Grayson with us, and he he has a little cabin in Seashelt as well, so he knows what it's all about. But we rented a little A-frame way up in Half Moon Bay, which is just on the ocean, and that was great. This time we took the um, we took our vehicle, and we also took the Cobra. So that was right. great because we had the Cobra to to, um, to drive around in while we were there. And we had this beautiful little cabin on the ocean, and in the morning we went and we collected shells, we collected clams. Um, we were sitting out there having breakfast, and we could see the orca whales out, the big killer whales out in the ocean, and that was it was absolutely breathtaking. It was so amazing. And because we were so close to home, we also invited a couple of friends to come up and spend um, a few nights with us. So it was fantastic. We had two sets of friends that came up, spent a couple of nights with us each, gave them a bit of a break. And, uh, you know, we brought our laptop so we could still right. do some work while we were up there. But, you know, we just had a great time on that trip. And we, and we were so remote in that case, there was no actually no high-speed Internet access. So... This is something we usually do when we head out of town is we, we bring one of our laptops with us. And there's a lot of places you can get high-speed wireless, even in a little town like Seashell, which was a little bit of a challenge, but we ended up finding a little computer store right in the mall. And every day or every other day, we were up there for seven, I think seven days, yeah. and we would head into the mall, open the laptop, you know, connect with wireless, and then do what we had to do online. Yeah. But then I didn't Those, I tell you, James, with that one we said there's no phone, there's no TV and there's no internet. That's right. And you know what? We didn't think we were going to survive at first, but we did, and it was so relaxing and so wonderful. How about any others? Yeah, and then right after, actually, right after that trip, um, we actually spent quite a bit of time last summer up in Whistler, and we had a condo up there for two weeks, and I spent the whole two weeks up there with Victoria and Adam, and we took our bikes up with us. And Whistler is one of the most beautiful communities in British Columbia. It's absolutely amazing. It's a huge ski resort, but in the summertime, there's still a ton of things to do there. There's lakes. We went swimming. We went biking. There's trails everywhere. There's this beautiful little village that's got the most amazing apples with chocolate sauce on them. We went up the (laughs) gondola, up the ski lift, and then James just kept popping in and out. Again, it's only about two hours from home, I guess, James? Yeah, about two-hour drive. Yeah, and so James would come out and spend a couple of days, and then he'd go back home, and then he'd come out again. And that was, again, it was just, you know, you, those memories last a lifetime. The kids had such a blast there. They can't wait to go back. It's the old, you know, it's have laptop, will travel. And one of the things that we've both had the opportunity to see was many, many students of ours who are out traveling around the world with their laptops now. And uh, we get emails from people who are, you know, all over the place. And uh, that's one of the things. The nice thing about a successful affiliate marketing business, you are no longer tied anywhere geographically. So I know people who live on lakes, who live out in cabins, who do all kinds of fun things because they can. So as long as you got access to uh, an Internet connection, preferably high speed, uh, you're, you're pretty much set to go, especially once you've got things set up, because once it's running, it's running. There's obviously maintenance, and if you want to take your income to another level, then there's another you know, push of, on the work area to, to, to drive it to that level. But if you're at a place where you're, you know, you're at the three or five grand a month mark, which is really a good goal for those that are just getting started, if you're looking to, a, you know, a full-time income. One thing I'd like to encourage people to do is if you've got huge goals, that's great, but let's get the small ones first. Let's get that 3000 a month happening. You know, one of the things I learned early on is 
I couldn't really believe that I could actually make, you know, 15, 20, 30 or 40 thousand dollars a month. It was something that would be nice, but there's no way I could even even fathom it. But I could see that possibly I could make three to five grand a month. So my very first goal was a hundred bucks a day. And one of the things that I learned from a guy that taught me goal setting was you set your goals as far as you can see, and then when you hit them, you then you can set them further. So at that point, as far as I could see, it was a hundred bucks a day. So that uh, was some good advice that I'd received from a mentor of mine. Now this this idea of you, you've talked a little bit, Arlene, about the mini breakations, and you know we've done more than we can count, but we've also done some major vacations, and we've We've organized it in such a way that uh, we've been able to, you know, write a lot of it off, that we've been able to travel to some pretty exotic places thanks to the business. And uh, I think we should probably talk about, give some ideas, you know, let's talk a little bit about book e- bookending the conferences. And then I would like you to share maybe your, your, your travel tips because I know you're a master at getting the best deals on travel. So okay. let's let's start with this whole concept of, bookending the conferences because it's I don't know if a lot of people probably haven't had a chance to think this one through and it's a way that people can travel for a lot less money than they think plus they can write off a good portion of the trip and they can enjoy five star conferences or five star resorts and you know get the learning that they can only get you know by rubbing shoulders with other people who are uh, successful in the business yeah and we do that all the time and I love the when they have a big conference somewhere because we always book a trip around it and I remember we took our kids out of school a couple years ago for three weeks oh the teachers hated us they say you can't take your kids out of school for three weeks so yes we can they're going to learn a lot more on this trip than they are in their class there we do it all the time teachers don't like us but we took them to uh, we we drove actually this trip we took the uh, the minivan and we drove down the Oregon coast and it's an amazing drive Went and just stopped at all these little cities. Took a week to get down there. We had a blast and went. To, uh, took the kids on dune buggies on the sand dunes. Went through the California redwoods. Went to San Francisco, and then down to, of course, the trolley cars because we have a son Adam who loves trains and all that kind of stuff. So we had fun there, and then That's down right. to Disneyland for. I can't remember. Did we spend five days at Disneyland that I think time? We had a five-day flex pass. Yeah, five-day flex pass. My feet would still remember that. We yeah. did. <laughs> That was fun. Yes. And then, right after that, we just drove right up to Santa Barbara and went to the CJU conference. And we had the kids with us. And uh, at that particular conference, I didn't attend the conference. Um, James was the only one there. But I took the kids down to the ocean every day. We went shopping on State Street. We went and did all the little touristy things. And then we'd go back to the hotel at night and, and meet up with James after dinner and go for a swim and stuff like that. So that was fantastic. You know what? That was actually about four years ago, not two years oh, ago. Oh yeah, that I guess was, it was. You know, time flies. That was CJU 2000, I think 2002 or 2003, and that that's, that was kind of the beginnings where we discovered this idea of, you know, uh, bookending a conference where you you have a conference that you want to go to, and you figure, okay, well, if I, we get there early and we stay late, in this case it was a little extreme because it was three weeks. Uh, sometimes we do that still, but usually it's a little bit less than that. But you get the write-off because now you can write off portion of the trip because you had to go there. So I know we've done this a number of times. There's another one that we did where we didn't take the kids, where you maybe want to share the the New York to Halifax yeah. trip. Yeah, that was really fantastic. We'd never been to New York. I've always wanted to go to New York, and here was the Affiliate Summit on a little cruise ship um, just sailing from New York to Halifax. And it was just a four-day trip. And we we um, stayed in New York for, I think, two or three nights first and, you know, did all the tacky tourist stuff. We just love New York, and we cannot wait to go back. It was an and, absolute uh, blast. Yeah, Remember, we took then, the double-decker bus. They cut the roofs <laughs> off their double-decker buses in uh, New York. We had a driver. We thought he was ri- driving a Ferrari yeah, in Russia, so or a big fun. double-decker bus. We had a pastrami sandwich that was probably nine inches high. I'm telling you, it was amazing. Yeah. Wandered the streets at two o'clock in the morning in New York, just as a couple. No, it was completely friendly and fun. It was an amazing city. Yeah, and then the, the, even the little cruise was fun. Like that was all business on the cruise, but there was still the internet cafe or on the cruise ship, and uh, you could still get your work done, which was great. And then our little trip to Halifax. Halifax is a beautiful little city. We'd never been there and really enjoyed it. 
That's actually where I think you met up with Bronwyn the first that's time. That's where we met with Bronwyn. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. And, and that's a great that's a great example of of a, of a way to bookend a conference because if you got to fly to New York to take in the conference, you can write that off. You have to fly home, you can write that off. You you can actually write off the conference and the time that you're staying in the whole hotel while you're taking in the conference. Now that's that you can write off anyways. And if you're have a business or if you're running a job, if you look at the end of the year and you're paying income tax to the government, you know you can write that off if you were to spend it on your business. So it's basically a free trip to you. So then you, you take that and you add maybe two or three days to the beginning of that, which you have to pay for, and maybe a couple of days after that. So now you've taken one side where you've got a holiday, where, which is what we did, where we toured all of New York for, I think, two days. Then we got on the cruise, did the conference, then we landed back in New York, and then we spent another couple of days wandering the city and doing some more things in New York. So that's the whole concept of bookending, you know, one of these uh, these conferences. And then if you look at it from a write-off point of view, you can pretty much write off a very good percentage of it. So at least you can in Canada, and I imagine in most places of the world it would be similar, so you probably want to talk to your accountant and stuff prior to that. But with, by doing a little bit of homework, you can figure out ways where you can travel and spend very little money. The CJU trip, for example, is, is a great one, great example because not only can you write it off, because it's held, because it's a conference and it's organized by Commission Junction, in this case, uh, CJU it's called, it's held every year, usually September or October, you get conference rates to stay in a five-star hotel. So instead of paying 450 U.S. a night, you can actually get it for about 160. So there's a lot of benefits to uh, bookending these uh, these conferences. Maybe maybe one more, one more quick one. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, what we did a couple years ago when we headed back to uh, Florida? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we decided, you know, as our kids are getting older now, Adam's almost 20 and Justin's almost 19. We needed to get a big family trip in because you know we knew that once the kids started leaving home, that was going to be it. We're going to have a hard time you know, keeping everyone together. So we took a major trip. We decided to do a um, a 10-day Caribbean cruise, but attached to that, because we were flying to Florida, we decided to do a, a week in Disney World first. So that was a really fun trip. We flew to Florida, drove up to uh, Disney World, got to see it all. Um, James and I had been to Disney World once before, but the kids had never been there, so they they just loved it. And we Again, we spent um, about five days there and then over to Kennedy Space Center and toured that whole area, you know, showed them a lot of the different things there, and then back down to uh, Fort Lauderdale and got on the cruise ship down to the Caribbean. And this was a really spectacular trip. We had, um, we had, we t- I think some of the islands we went to were St. Thomas, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada, and Marguerite. And Saint, at St. Vincent, they were actually filming the Pirates of the Caribbean 2 movie right. and uh we our son adam again is a huge pirates of the caribbean johnny depp fan and we we took a taxi and about 45 minutes into the uh, way past anywhere we should have been yeah way into the kind of almost the jungle and uh there it was the whole movie set right there and we could see the little dock that he came in on and and we were there just a few days before they started filming so they were scurrying around and getting everything ready and it was fantastic. All the, the big ships were there, and, and you know, it was just the memories from that were, alone were just incredible. And the and whole time thing, that we were gone, you know, again, we had, Arlene had the laptop in this case, and you, you I think you were working on what you do in the business, you know, which is usually deal with writers. Maybe you want to touch on that a little bit. What, yeah. what, so here we are. We're on a cruise ship. I'm actually working about an hour a day in a beautiful onboard internet cafe, logging in, checking my stats, and doing the stuff I do. But you're you, you're heading back to the hotel room as well, and you you've got the laptop tied into the wireless system on board. And then right. what are you, what are you doing online? So what I was doing was, um, of course, checking my customer service emails, getting back to people, and then also keeping in touch with the writers through at Elance, and just making sure that our projects were still going. Um, you know, making sure the bids were being done and the writing was coming in and getting put on the, the sites and things like that. It was, you know, it was really easy to do. They didn't know that we weren't at home. <laughs> no, that's right. That's absolutely right. So let's talk a little bit about 
Arlene's travel tips, because I know you share them with me from time to time, and I know you've booked me on probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 different airline flights, and a lot of times you're with me, sometimes I'm off on my own, and a lot of times it's all of us with the kids, so I know you've got good experience, and for those that you know may not be versed in a lot of travel, you're probably going to really want to listen up to this, because she can save you a small fortune, and this stuff is very cool, because it's come through a lot of experience, and it's... You know, one thing I find from t- talking with people that are not used to traveling, like when we got into this business, we were not used to going to the airport. Going to the airport was such a rarity that it was such a big thing. But nowadays, we're we're off all the time to the airport. So, But for those that are not used to doing that, but maybe would like to possibly get used to doing that, because it is a lot of fun, why don't you share some of the things that you've learned about saving money on airfare? Because there's one thing to make the money, but we don't want to pay it back. You know, the, the the idea with making money with affiliate programs is to keep as much of it as possible. So just because you make good money doesn't mean you need to want to spend it all. So we're always looking for deals on trips and travel and everything that we're doing. And Arlene's one of the thriftiest people I know. So uh, well, when you're traveling with four kids, to it, it it gets a little expensive. So, you know, anywhere that you can save a few dollars, um, you really make sense. You know, we probably spend twice as much as anybody else that's taking the same trip, only because we're dragging four kids behind us. So, you know what, I really do look for the deals. And a couple of the ways that I've done that is um, I subscribe to the travel email deals. So I get emails that pop into my inbox, and, in, and if I'm, if I'm going to be traveling, then I'll open them. If I'm not traveling, then I just delete them. It just takes a minute. But um, there's a lot of travel deals that pop in, and they might be um, special airfares uh, to Las Vegas, and we do travel so, to Las Vegas a lot. So where would, where would you sign up for these travel deals? Um, let's see. From Las Vegas, they have like a little um, they have like a little travel center there, and you you just you just subscribe to it. You just it's like their their hotel subscription, and so in that Vegas? when any of the hotels have a travel deal and just come right into your inbox. So is this you on one of the websites? The little, website? little desk, and they'll you can subscribe to the travel deals right there. So, so how, do you any idea how somebody would find? Is it a website address? No, I don't have that right here in front of me. Okay. Yeah, but I can I can uh, I can look that up for everyone. But it's just a little email deal that comes right in. So if the if the um, any of the hotels, so uh, let's say Paris has a deal on, I'll get an email saying Paris has a special rate on. Or um, well, I know the last time we went down to Vegas, you had a, you got a, a good deal. Yeah. Are you talking about the Paris trip? Uh, no, I think the last airfare that we took. When oh, I was the last heading. airfare, yeah. And again, that was um, that was through Allegiant Air, and again, it was one of these um, emails that just popped in. And this was I had gone to Allegiant Air and signed up for their travel deals because Allegiant Air is in Bellingham, and they're really close to us. So that was looking for an airport that was close to us, and they, an email popped into my inbox, and it said airfare to Las Vegas, twenty-seven dollars there, and it was sixty-nine dollars return. Still it amazes just, me. It was just unbelievable because you could typically pay um, three to four hundred dollars uh, each way to to Vegas, depending on what time of the year that you're going. So when little travel deals like this pop in, and we're and we're heading out, then we'll take advantage of them. They they really are amazing. So that's one now, of the things I do. Now, tell a little example of the Paris story, because this is something you do all the time. Right. That uh, I know marveled me the first time. And I'm not the most bold guy when I wander up to the counter, so you may want to kind of flesh this out a little bit. But, but go, tell them the $20 trick that you've learned, or maybe where you've learned this. Right. Um, I bought a book called The Travel Detective, and this guy is amazing. He travels the world, and he tells you how to get little deals and little tips and little tricks for traveling. And mm-hmm. it was the funnest book to read. I'm telling you, I had such a hoot with that book. And one of the little tricks that he put in there was when you book yourself into a hotel, um, what you do is you ask, you go up to your, to the, uh, the I think you first book, you first booked this, you first booked this online, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the Paris one, I actually got a deal. Now Paris again is, is quite a nice hotel there. And um, I got it's a beautiful five star hotel in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, I got an internet deal where the room was um, $99 a night, so I had booked that online. And then when we got there, we got to the counter and we went up to the lady and she was checking us in. And we said, 
And one of the things that we learned was you give them, you give the person a $20 bill and you say, do you have any upgrades available? And we've done this several times. And this woman said, oh, um, let me see what I've got. No, no, she said, oh, you mean for free? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, she said, you mean for free? And we said, well, yeah. And she actually said, well, let me see what I've got. And she booked us into a room, and it was like a $600 a night suite. It was absolutely massive. It had this grand, um, like, en suite with, you know, with just the most amazing hotel room that I think I've ever stayed in. It was absolutely gorgeous. And she booked us in that for free. Yeah, for and a nice so little $20 tip. That was, so we gave her, yeah. <laughs> it was, it yeah, we've, nice and we've used this a lot. This And it doesn't always work. No, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's not that, that extreme, but a lot of times, you know, even Phil and I, we went down to Affiliate Summit last August in uh, Disney World again, back to uh, one of the hotels there. Uh, $20 comes out, and they didn't have any upgrades because all the rooms were identical. But for the $20 tip, he moved us from the back of the hotel to the front, moved us up a few floors, and now we had a beautiful view that we would not have had uh, right. if, we didn't, if we didn't do you that. Know, one. And I think most people are just afraid to ask. But you know what? If it works 50% of the time and you get a nicer room, it's worth it. It's fantastic. So we well, and, always... and everybody loves to get a tip. So yeah. and that's all we're giving the, the, the clerk across the counter is a tip. Right. So that works out really good. And so some of the other things I do is I like to book sometimes through Priceline. And Priceline is great because you, you actually fill in your own price. And we did this to our, our trip to Maui. We went for 10 days to Maui, and we took Victoria with us. And this is a five-star daughter. hotel that is absolutely amazing. And we got 10 days at the Sheraton Maui for $1,600. Yeah, it was regular $450 a night room. And that that would be forty five hundred u s just for the ten days and by using priceline so these these travel deals that we see online and we see on t v with a little bit of work, they are actually the real deal, yeah, they really are, and we use them all the time and if if we ever have to fly out of Seattle or anything and we need just to get a little hotel right by the airport these this this is a great place if you ever need a hotel by an airport, you can usually get your room for about um forty nine dollars a night. And typically, if you were just to drive in there and ask for a room, they'd charge you about 120 to 150 dollars a night. So now you have a little fun. trick as to which night of the week is the best day right. to one, book one your Right. One of the things I also learned um, is that the the airlines they kind of go on a schedule, and Wednesday midnight is kind of when they rearrange their schedule and when their prices are at their very lowest. So if you were to go and you wanted to book a trip. Go online just after midnight on Wednesday, and it'll be the the least expensive that you're going to find the airfare for that company. And then as the week progresses, it gets more and more expensive. And I've tried this a few times, and you know, looked at trips, and then I, you know, I would wait uh, 24 hours, look again, exact same flight would be about $100 more. Wait another 24 hours, look again, and it would have gone up another $100 after that. So. You know, it really it was really a cool little tip that I learned there and that I hadn't known that before. And what was the name of that book again? The Travel Detective. It was a, I think if I recall that was a it was a CBS reporter or one a reporter for one of the major news networks that travels all over the world as a news reporter and he just decided to write a book about all the things that he had learned on how to get deals with hotels and yeah. all kinds of things. And he has he has particularly a lot of tips in there for the single traveler that really wants to travel cheap through Europe and stuff like that too. It's just amazing the little book, with lots of tips in there. One of the little tips I learned it wasn't from that book, but it was quite a few years ago when I first started traveling, was tipping, which sounds like a crazy thing because we usually all tip, depending on the country you're in. But one thing that I've learned to do, and anytime I go into these hotels, the first the very first thing that I do is tip the concierge well. So if I hit down to Commission Junction University, I'm the first guy to tip tip the concierge 40 bucks as I walk in the door, and which sounds like a lot of money, and they take your luggage and they get you settled in the hotel and everything. But I'll tell you what, it's the best 40 bucks that I spend every year because we're treated like gold. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, it's amazing if you take care of the hotel staff how they'll take care of you. 
And uh, we've done this everywhere we go, anywhere that we repeat all the time especially. And uh, I can walk into CJ into uh, the Fest Parker Doubletree, which is a beautiful five-star hotel that you'll go to if you if you decide to attend CJU uh, in September. And first thing I do is I tip them 40 bucks, and, you know, out come the warm cookies, out come, it's just amazing. I'll, Mr. Martell, take care of everything, don't worry. And literally, we're off, and he books us in. Next thing we know, our, our luggage is in the room, and for the rest of the weekend, we're treated like royalty. Yeah, so, it, it really does work. It really is amazing. Yeah, just give them a tip, and they're and they're just there to help you. And you're going to get great service. So I think that pr- pretty much gives a, a pretty good rounding on this whole idea of breakations. A- anything else come to mind that you'd like to share with uh, listeners? Well, one of the other um, things that I did learn too, once we flew, when we flew to um, Florida, I booked through American Airlines. And they have a little button on there. Once you book your, you you know, kind of go through the itinerary and you're looking at the, the dates and the times and everything that you want to do, they have another little button at the bottom that says, um, are you flexible with your schedule? And usually we are. So I, if you click on that, sometimes they'll send you on a flight that's like an hour earlier or an hour later, but the the, the rate just drops. It's just amazing because they're, um, it's a less popular flight for them, I guess, and they're trying to get the seats filled up. And these are not red-eye flights, but um, they dropped the prices. And we were able to get that flight to Florida. I, I'm pretty sure it was return, and there were six of us going, and it was $169 return from British Columbia, which was just phenomenal. Absolute screaming because deal. That and if I recall, you, on there. Yeah, you showed me that button a few times. It's microscopic, so you really got to look for it. So they're not really heavily promoting it. Yeah, but uh, I guess certain people know about it, and you can find it. Yeah, and it just says flexible with your schedule, and then you can click on it, and it'll just give you a few other little options. And on that particular one, we even got a better flight than the first one that we had had tried to get on. So that was great. And then the other the other place that I do check as well is I Travel 2000. I love that that little um, internet service as well. I've always gotten really good customer service there. And we've never, ever, ever had an issue when traveling, when we travel with iTravel 2000. And they have a deals link on there. So if you're, you know, in the, if you guys can just get away at the last minute, you can get a fantastic deal on travel from there as well. You know, that kind of reminds me of, you know, one of the things or one of the benefits of, of building a, a successful affiliate marketing business and actually being able to say goodbye to the boss, if, that was, if that's your goal, is that you're no longer tethered to the traditional holiday schedule that so many are, you know, you know, tethered to is a good word, you know, Easter break, spring break, Christmas holiday season, summer holidays, where where you're paying on peak rates. And typically it's at least double and you're competing with the travel, the volume of visitors, you know, everything's busier, everything's uh, you know, harder to get. Everything costs more money because it's on season. Where if you've you've developed yourself a successful affiliate marketing business, where you've got the freedom of time now and you can book your own schedule. In addition to everything else, Arlene's talked about, you can now travel off peak and get better service because there's not as many people there. You can get way cheaper rates because it's off peak, and and that not only off peak for just the Maui, for example. Hotels are less, airfares less, but so are all the attractions that are there. Warren and Annabelle's Magic Show, which is on the beach, was a spectacular thing you got to see. Or taking a helicopter ride, or heading out on the submarine, or going parasailing, uh, which reminds me of your photo. You should probably mention that, which is a pretty cool thing. But yeah. this whole idea, once you have the freedom, I've always heard once once you have money, you don't need as much. And it's actually true, and these are some of the reasons why, is because if you're, you're working full-time and the only time you can travel is during spring break, instantly you pay double what everybody else pays because that's when the rates go up. Yeah, and, you know, the other thing, too, is if you're just traveling, like even in your own little state or province, um, check out some of the bed and breakfasts. There are some beautiful bed and breakfasts around, and we've always enjoyed staying in bed and breakfast. You always get a great breakfast. You get a, you get a friendly host and you get a comfortable room, and we've, we've stayed in some really, really nice ones, and we've always enjoyed that. You know what you should do, Arlene? I think you should start a website called arlenestraveltips.com. And how to get a fluffy and, uh, bathrobe. 
<laughs> There's a good <laughs> tell that story. That's a riot. Another <laughs> classic affiliate marketing story. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were at um, CJU, and um, everyone was just kind of winding down the day, and, and a bunch of us girls got together, and we decided that we wanted to go have our own little wine and cheese party. So we went and got some wine, and we went and got some cheese and crackers, and then we we had an idea. We said, you know what we need is some big, white, fluffy bathrobes. I wonder if, we, if the hotel has any. So we, we were all in one room. We dialed up the uh, the room service, and we said, do you guys have any big, white, fluffy bathrobes? And he goes, yep. And I said, he goes, how many do you need? We need five. And he shipped them down to us right away. And uh, we went to the hot tub and had our cheese and crackers and wine. And then after that, we decided to go see what, if we could find everybody. And they were all kind of just, you know, still networking and standing around at the bar and stuff. And we had our, our big bathrobes on, and we walked into the uh, – into the bar with our bathrobes on, and we just everybody just cracked up. I thought that was so funny. Oh yeah, we're still talking about that. Yeah, that was, was absolutely a lot of fun. A riot. So I want to thank you, uh, Honey Buns, for sharing all your little tips and your little tricks. I know they work. I'm the the beneficiary of so many of them, and uh, I want to thank you for that publicly. Uh, you've shared uh, some really cool stuff. For those that uh, may be listening to a recording of this they're out in their car and stuff thank you so much for joining us it's been great to have you on the line for those that are with us live right now we're going to head over to the conference room and uh, answer any questions or we will be happy to answer any questions that you have regarding uh, I guess travel tips and vacations and you know the lifestyle I guess of an affiliate marketer once you've uh, got your business off the ground and running and just some of the fun things that you can do for those that are maybe interested in learning more, you can visit uh, the affiliate edge.net to uh, learn more about everything we do, about training and tools and tips and the fun we have, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on the net. So for the rest of you that are live, we'll maybe hang up now and we'll meet you in the conference room. Bye for now. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.